All right, today let's have some fun with mic techniques and mic rejection of unwanted noise. I've got four mics here. We're going to go through them. I will do some volume compensation after this is recorded and get the levels to be about the same and take that a little bit out of the equation. So let's go ahead and start with the first mic. We got an SM58, the old workhorse of sound. There's something called proper mic technique, but who's to say and judge what proper is? I know that I'm not proper, so we will just consider all mic techniques to be proper mic techniques, with some of them offering better sound than others, and some of them making our jobs more challenging, which keeps us from getting bored. So we have our slight distance, and then we also have our lips to the grill. And you can hear the low end should increase due to proximity effect. And off the grill a bit, we have the sound drop slightly. It should change in tone, even though I'm going to compensate the volume later, the tone of it, and you should hear more of the room. I have not put high pass filters. This is just gain only over the grill. Now, this is good for the performer to be seen and, um, the sound can actually be quite good in this situation, and it's sometimes nice not to have the mic pointed to the drum set when they move their head away. Um, you might get less cymbals depending on the structure of the ceiling up there and how far away it is. Uh, the near far, where they augment the sound as they get really loud and they sing far away, and then they get close again and help us out with mixing here. And we have the far, far, where everything is far away. I know we've run into this with lecterns, where we have somebody speaking in the far, and then they modify the far miking with the distracted speaking, where they might speak nowhere near the mic and talk to people um, or look at the audience ignoring the mic altogether. This absolutely increases the amount of complexity for us as sound engineers. And this can be very fun. The cupping of the mic is a popular technique used so that the singer may hear themselves better in the monitors or ears. And it also has the high probability of increasing that beautiful tone that we hear known as 2.5K feedback. And that can be modified, not unlike the far, far and distracted techniques with the super cup which really, really makes it sound like somebody's shouting in your ear, and it kind of gives an uncomfortable feeling, unless, of course, they're into the whisper. And now some singers do involve the whisper. I've mixed a few bands and sung about this loud, and this can be quite handy, especially when there's loud stage volumes. All right, so here we got our first mic. Let's go ahead and try the next one. It's a PR35 Heil. And we'll go through the techniques here um, and find out what's proper. We got lips to the grill and we can hear the sound of this mic with lips to the grill and off the grill a little bit and hear the way the sound changes. Over the grill, um, it also helps with the P-pop somewhat if you don't have the high pass filter in. And um, we can go to the near and far, where we sing louder when we're far away and softer when we're close. And the far, far, and the lectern version of that, where we just don't even get near the mic at all, and the distracted adventure, which sometimes helps. Ah, uh, here it comes. The cupping of the mic, followed by this, followed by the super cup. I really had to get my hands positioned there for the super cup. I was not prepared to do it. A skilled performer can super cup very quickly and more efficiently than I. And we have the whisper and the off mic whisper while we're speaking really quiet. And let's get ready to do the next mic, which is an Audix OM7. All right, OM7. We've got... Um, 
a little bit away from the grill and lips to the grill and we can hear the sound of the voice there it sounds warm and up close in my headphones and we got the off the grill sound followed by the over the grill and as we go near and sing louder when we're farther away we got the far far distracted sound where we are not paying attention to the microphone that is actually allowing people to hear us cupping of the mic followed by super cupping uh what an up close and personal sound it really kind of narrows the range there our final mic we've got a Coles 4104 now you might think this is a training mic because it has a little lip bumper on it that allows the person speaking to know the exact distance that the mic should be from their lips and unless you hold this cable to your chest if you hold this vertically it keeps it exactly at the distance. So this actually might have a proper mic technique that involves holding this bar to your lip. But let's go ahead and try some of these other techniques like off the grill. Hey, 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 we'll back up from a bit and we'll sing over it. Boy, that's gonna be tough if we were to sing over it here. And uh, the near far, if we sing far away, and then we get close, close, and far, far. The distracted singer that sings into the mic or speaks into the mic and then moves side to side, it's really uncomfortable with this mic because you really want to hold this thing to your lip. It kind of teaches you to do it properly. Maybe we should make a little clip for all the mics to do this. All right, well, this is kind of fun, but let's bump this up a notch and add some noise. All right, for the next adventure, I brought in this compressor to give us a little help me out and it will add a little background noise. So let's fire this up and let's see what happens here. Now we have some hefty stage volume and oh, it's got some air coming out here and I'm talking into the SM58. I'm very close and I'm gonna move farther away. And this is me talking up close. And we can hear the ratio of my voice to the compressor sound. Let's move on to the Heil. All right. That sounds about the same in my ears, but I got a lot of noise going on here. So it's going to be really interesting to find out what is the ratio. How does this sound? How much of that compressor do you hear? Let's see what the OM7 comes out like. All right. Here's the OM7. We're listening to that. Now, the reason I'm doing this test and I got inspired was the next mic that I'm gonna test, the Coles mic, is made for high noise environments. And I saw it in F1 announcers. Watch them use this mic. It seems to be the go-to mic, but it's very, very niche. It doesn't seem to have a lot of applications that it's popular for. So this is the OM7. Let's go ahead and try the Coles 4104. All right, well, I definitely hear a lot of hiss. I hear this, look at that. I hear the hiss of the air coming out. That's really interesting. I'll put my finger over it. So I'll have to go back through and keep this plugged and listen to all the mics this way and this way as well. Maybe it's a low frequency rejection. Let's see what happens. And here is the OM7 with the air leak closed and the air leak opened and uh, we can listen to the sound of the voice there Heil mic with the air leak closed and the air leak opened and we can hear the difference sm58 air leak closed and air leak opened all right and here's the coles mic let's go ahead and shut this off oh. Now, another interesting aspect to the Coles mic is on this X32, I had to turn the gain all the way up. I mean, there is none more gain. It's at 10 and there's no 11. With the other mics, I'm at various levels of turn down. I actually went and got one of the Neve preamps and brought it home from Rat. It was able to give me more gain and less noise. And this kind of highlighted one of the issues with the less expensive consoles is noise. A mic like this that has low gain and this doesn't have enough gain. This is turned up all the way and I'm just barely hitting minus 18. 
if I wanted more gain, if I had someone that talked like this, I would not be able to get them to nominal level. Additionally, it's got some background hiss. Uh, when I did the X32, M32 comparisons, the M32 was quieter, and both boards are not very high on the low noise adventure. This was all inspired by this mic after watching um, F1 and watching people hold this to their lip, and I thought that was really cool. I need one, so I went and bought one, and I uh, thought I'd share it with you, and also we'll do some uh, other mucking around with it. Cool, cool. Hope you enjoyed, and I'm looking forward to hearing what this stuff sounds like as you're hearing it already.